Hi everyone, this is Archangeli. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to old friends and welcome to new friends. So today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite game franchises, which is Xenogears, Xenosaga, and Xenoblades. I've been a fan of this franchise for a really long time. Like, come to think of it, I've had my copy of Xenogears for probably over, over well over 20 years, and this is the OG, it's not the re-release. So yeah, this franchise has been in my life for a very long time. Xeno Saga is still one of my favorite games. The plot is amazing. The mythology and the story arc is just phenomenal. And it introduced the character of Cosmos, who is obviously one of my favorite characters. There's two display cases full of nothing but Cosmos. A little bit of Momo, but mostly Cosmos. So today, let's open three figures from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Here's the front of the box for Homura. Homura is the Japanese name for this figure. In the English game, she was called Pyra, which is what I'll probably refer to most of this video. So on the front, there's a concept art of the figure, and then on the side here is a picture of the figure. On the back, again, is a picture of the figure with some detailed photos inset showing how this Homura figure interacts with the Hikari figure. There's a bit of legal jargon as well as a hologram sticker to show that it is a legitimate good smile figure. And on the side is the back of the figure. On the top is a little viewing window, again with a photo of the figure, and on the bottom it just says Homura, very plain, not too much going on here. So let's open up this figure. So Pyra is the first summon that you unlock when you're playing this game. She's a very powerful character. She's a very popular character too. So popular in fact that she's made an appearance in Smash Brothers. Now if you want to pause here, you can have a read through the English assembly instructions while I open up the rest of this. Uh, and because Cosmos makes a cameo appearance in the Xenoblades Chronicles 2 game, I thought it would be really nice to have Pyra and Mithra figures to display alongside the Cosmos figure from this game. So here we have Pyra's sword. Now Pyra is a fire element character, which is why her sword is characterized by flames and the blade is quite pointy, so do be careful not to damage the tips of the sword. Next we have a metal support rod, and here's the figure itself. It is completely assembled, so you don't need to click any pieces together, and she is holding the hilt of the sword already. I'll spin her around quickly so you can see the back of the outfit. She's wearing short little hot pants, and you can see, I mean, I will loosely call this armor, but it doesn't really protect very much of her. And in the box here are these little, I want to call them coattails, but she's not really wearing a coat, so like cape tails maybe? <laughs> anyway, so let's assemble the Pyra figure. So the blade just slides right into the hilt really nicely. And then next we can put the little cape tails on. Again, these just click into little holes in the back of the figure. You just have to line them up and they slide in very, very smoothly. And next we will put the metal support rod in her foot. So this just goes in the back of her left foot. And then her right foot goes onto the peg on the base. It is a metal peg, which is fantastic, meaning that it will support the weight of the figure. And then you put the metal rod into the base and there you have it. So here's Pyra on her base, and you can see she's holding her Aegis sword. I love that this is cast in a clear PVC because the way that it's painted with this dark orange gradient down to this, it's like a light blue in the core of the sword. It just looks really, really fiery and spectacular. As I mentioned, the tips of the sword are very pointy, so be careful when you're moving it around so you don't accidentally break the tips because that would be absolutely tragic. I like the use of the metallic red throughout the figure. Obviously you see it on the sword, but you also see it on the cape tails, on her, her chest piece and on her little hot pants and on her booties. It gives a sense that she has some sort of metallic armor going on, even though she's not really wearing very much. <laughs> I appreciate the thought. I also really like the motion that's captured in her little cape tails. There's this sense of lightness and motion in them. But it's not flimsy. When I was moving this figure around, I didn't feel like they were going to fall out or that I was going to break them just by accidentally knocking them. Again, the way that this, scu this sculpture is posed is fantastic, and I'm really grateful for Good Smile for using the metal pegs 
foot, or rather the metal peg in her one foot and the metal support rod on the other foot, just to hold up the weight of this figure so that she doesn't lean uh, beyond all repair within two days. So good job, good smile. This figure is very, very well balanced. Her face is really lovely. There's this lovely serene expression that she has, and the character of Pyra in the game is a little bit meek and shy, and I think that they've really captured that very well in this figure. Overall, I think they've done a really beautiful job, and this figure is absolutely spectacular. Next up, we have Hikari, which is the Japanese name for Mithra. So I will be calling her Mithra for the rest of the video. Here at the front of the box, we have her beautiful concept artwork. On the side here, we see the back of the figure. And on the back of the box is a full image of the figure with a couple insets showing how the figure interconnects with the Pyra statue. There's some legal jargon and also the hologram sticker to indicate this is an authentic Good Smile figure. On the side and on the top of the box, we have the front uh, photo of the figure. And on the bottom, it just says Hikari. It's pretty simple on the bottom. So let's open up the figure. Now in the game, Mithra is an alternate personality of Pyra. They are the same person, but I guess the easiest way to describe her, she's like a split personality. You can play as either Pyra or Mithra during the game. However, uh, spoiler, at the end of the game, the two characters do become one. Now, if you wanted to pause there, that was the English assembly instructions on how to put this figure together. Sorry. Uh, so let me just continue on opening the figure here. And be careful with the base because it can fall right out as you're taking up the blister packaging. Here is the Aegis sword for Mithra. It has some very pointy parts at, that are extending from the main blade. So just be careful, they're very pointy and that makes them a bit fragile. The hilt already comes pre-attached and you can see this wonderful gradient paint job on this sword. Next, we have a clear support stand. Um, there's just the rod and little base for that. And next is the figure. She does come pre-assembled, but there is these little foam collar pieces underneath her neck and underneath her skirt. So you have to disassemble her to remove them. You don't want to just rip them off. So first we're going to pull her legs off and her head off, and then we can easily just remove these foam pieces. And while I have her disassembled here, we can have a look at some details. You can see she's got some cute little pantsu and you can see the detail on her boots as well. I do appreciate the detail that they and the thought that they put into this. And here we can see the front of her armor. And I'm going to turn her around so you can get a good look at the back of the armor because once I put the hair back on, all of this kind of gets covered up. But I do appreciate all of the detail that's put into this. So her head just slides back in with a peg. And here is Mithra. She is beautiful, truly, truly a beautiful figure. So let's put her sword in her hand. Uh, there is a hole in her left hand that the hilt has to go into. So let's, you, the hilt just slides right off the sword quite easily, but the hole that of between her fingers is actually quite snug. So I'm gonna take her legs and her hair off again because they were just kind of stabbing me and kind of getting in the way as I try to get the hilt into her hand. And once you've got that, it's quite easy to assemble the figure. Her foot goes into the metal peg. This clear stand just slides underneath her knee. And then the blade can slide really easily into the hilt of the sword. So here is Mithra completely assembled. So here's Mithra now on her base, fully assembled, and this figure is so cool. First of all, as she's spinning around, you get a wonderful view of her Aegis sword. I love how there's a wonderful use of this clear PVC again, much more than on Pyra's sword, and you can really see this beautiful gradient from this green to kind of a white and then a yellow, and then the blade pieces that extend out gradient out to the green again. Now, because these pieces do extend out a little further, it does make the sword a little more fragile. They're very pointy and easy to stab yourself with, so just be careful that you don't accidentally break them. 
I love this outfit and coming at this from a cosplay point of view, there are things to Mithra's outfit that I recognize from Cosmos in Xenosaga 1, particularly the shape of the top of her outfit. These gold pieces on her hips definitely scream original Cosmos to me. And also these um, elements at the top of her gloves, they definitely referenced old school Cosmos here. Not the Cosmos that will make an appearance in this game, but the original artwork for Cosmos that I remember. Now you can see the beautiful texturing and shading that they've done to her hair. It's a little hard to pick up in this video, but they've actually used a shimmery yellow pearlescent paint in her hair. And I think that this golden shimmer in her hair, along with the use of the clear PVC in her sword, it really comes together beautifully to illustrate that Mithra is a light element character. And now looking at her face, her face is a little more, I want to say moe. It's not stern, but definitely not as soft and as cute as Pyra's face sculpt was, but there's still a loveliness to her. And I think it's really, really nicely done. And finally, we have the Cosmos figure from the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 series. Now this figure came actually a full year later than the other two. So this is why the box looks a bit different. So here, on the side of the box, we have a photo of the back of the figure. And on the back of the box, here's a full image of the figure, a couple insets, uh, a little legal jargon, and again, the hologram to indicate this is a legit Goodsmile figure. On the side, we have a close up of Cosmos with the alternate visor into the little cat ears. It's so cute. So on the top is just a silhouette of Cosmos. And on the bottom, it says Cosmos RE. So a remix, a remake. I'm, I'm not sure what this means. So let's open up the figure and have a look at this. So Cosmos in this game is actually a bit of an Easter egg. She's a secret summon that you can unlock through a Gashapon system in the game. She's a rare summon, so you can actually play through this game without ever unlocking her. Oh, here are the instructions for assembling Cosmos. If you needed to pause and have a read through that, you can do that. And as I was saying, you can play through Xenoblade 2 and never unlock Cosmos, and you would still be able to finish the game completely normally. But Cosmos was added as a nod to the fans um, that loved the original series. So the creator kind of added her as an Easter egg. So here is one of her Gatling guns. It is shaped like a Zohar in reference to the original games, which I think is really cool. This is really beautifully sculpted. It's, it's not a flat piece at all. It's really, really cool. So there are two of those because Cosmos is most known for carrying a pair of Gatling guns. So she's got two of these uh, Zohar guns in this figure. And next is the, what is this? Oh, this is the little Nekomimi headpiece. It's so cute, guys. This is ridiculously cute. Cosmos isn't supposed to be cute. <laughs> All right, so here's the figure. It does come pretty much assembled. Um, however, there is a foam collar piece underneath the head. So we're just going to take her head off to remove that piece. And there's a clear cling film just protecting her face up. So we'll remove that as well. And you can have a look at the armor. Uh, you can just see the detailing on the abs and these hip pieces and on the spine, the back of her outfit. All of this is very much a nod to the design of Cosmos in the first Xenosaga game. And I'm sorry about the positioning here. Um, I didn't quite realize I wasn't in frame. So let's get Cosmos on her base. So they've used two nice sturdy metal pegs here, thank goodness. So it will keep her upright. And these just fit in. They were a little bit snug. You just have to position them uh, just right. But then once they're in, she's very, very supported on this base. And next we will attach her arms. And these just are little pegs again. They just attach onto the top of the arms. So there's one arm. And next we'll do the other arm. Pretty simple. And next we will attach her head. 
a few moments later. Okay, so I'm still trying to get her head on. No, let's get her arm back on first. And you can, oh, this is, her head is a little fiddly. I think I had her facing the wrong direction, but there we go. I finally got her head on. Now let's put the little headpiece. And here she is. So here we have Cosmos fully assembled with her default visor on so that we can have a nice clear look at her face. So let's talk about her face for a moment. This is actually a softer and cuter look than I would typically think of for Cosmos. I think of Cosmos as a stoic and kind of stern robot. And this kind of cute, soft face, I think this was a conscious choice to make her look a little bit like the Pyra and Mithra figures so that the three of them, when they're displayed together, look like a nice series. They look like a cohesive set. I, I appreciate that. That's fine. Uh, next, as she spins around, you can get a good look at the beautiful paintwork on her Zohar Gatling guns. These are just so spectacularly sculpted and the paintwork on them is so detailed and it's it just they look really, really wonderful. And here we have the alternate visor that covers her face and has these little Nickel Mimi cat ears. I think these are absolutely adorable. Uh, and as she spins around again, you can see the beautiful way that they've sculpted her hair. They've used a slightly translucent PVC. So you see this gradient from this light blue to this light aqua to the tips of her hair. And it's a little hard to pick up on camera, but there's actually a beautiful opalescent shimmer that they've put in her hair to just reflect the light and it looks fantastic. And speaking of shimmer, all of the white paint is actually a pearl finish. It's not a flat white and it's not metallic either. And I like that they've chosen to use this pearl white. It really does accent the fact that Cosmos is a robot. She is an android and there's nothing natural about her. So she shouldn't look like she's wearing armor and it shouldn't be like a flat matte white either. I think the choice of using the pearl is really, really nice. Overall, you can see the design of this figure really does reference elements of Xenosaga 1, Cosmos design, but elevated. R Remixed, is that what the RE on the box stood for? I'm not sure, but it really a wonderfully done Cosmos figure and a spectacular addition to my collection. Well, there you have it. These figures are absolutely phenomenal. Good Smile knocked it out of the park with these three. They are beautiful. Yeah, really, I'm super impressed and really, really happy with them. Now, if there's anything else in the collection you'd like to see, feel free to leave me a comment. I do read all of them and it'll give me an idea of what you'd like to see next. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to my videos and click the little bell so you get a notification the next time I post something new. Now I'm going to go put these in a display case. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day.